Brethren, be not wise in your own conceits. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil by good. Words taken from the lesson for today's Mass, the third Sunday after Epiphany. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Over the past few decades, I have heard many prophecies and statements about the future, and I'm sure you have too. One priest I know proclaimed at the beginning of nearly every January, this is the year, he would say, the chastisement will come for sure this year. And he was not just joking around either. He meant it. He took the Y2K scare very seriously and almost seemed dispirited that nothing of note really happened. The year 2000 came and the year 2000 went. I often wonder what he is saying now in this new year of 2018. Now think about it. How many expected something really big to happen in 2017? The momentous 100th year anniversary of the Fatima apparitions. Many, I would say. And yet, here we are. Growing up, I was taught that oil supplies would be greatly depleted by the year 2000. I once saw a Saturday morning program that explained what man would look like in the future. Since all he would be doing is thinking lots and pushing buttons, not surprisingly, they depicted the future human as being mostly a big head with a tiny body, as so many aliens are represented in films. What? Nonsense. In the 1970s, we were told of a coming ice age. Later, as we all know well from the false theories surrounding the so-called global warming, the predicted ice age suddenly become a future greenhouse. Again, as we've experienced this winter, what nonsense. In the early 1990s, I remember my father becoming concerned about an imminent stock market collapse after reading a book called Crash 95. He was convinced that we are in for it. Others have forecast dire predictions based on a future population explosion. And yet, here we are at the beginning of 2018. We are still here. Hmm. Very little, very few of the predictions have materialized. How many of those losing sleep over such things have long since died before anything came to pass? By the early 1970s, Hollywood capitalized heavily on this flaw in man. Excessive worry and anxiety about the future. Providing quite a few futuristic films. Depicting widespread destruction caused by everything from natural disasters, animals, insects, diseases, as well as many man-made causes like nuclear war and even aliens from outer space. Thus, films like The Omega Man, Soylent Green, Planet of the Apes, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 2010, and so on became popular. Again, here we are at the beginning of 2018. We're still here. No aliens, just tricks of the devil for those looking for them. From the realm of the faith, there have been many claiming to be prophets sent by God, many of whom, sad to say, have not been approved by God's church. Not surprisingly, they too predict similar disasters. Come on, we've heard it all. Asteroids, comets, electromagnetic pulses, even some hidden planet on a collision course with the earth and so on. A number of these people, so-called quote-unquote prophets, provided dates, times, and signs, none of which have come to pass as predicted. Here we are. It's the year 2018. We're still here. Our Lord told us, beware of false prophets. Once a priest of no little standing told me that we would be fighting to keep the Novus Ordo in place as it was under John Paul II, as we're fighting for the traditional mass. Recently, 
There have been prophecies of the elimination of the Latin mass or some synthesis of the new and old, and we're going to have to go into the garage and all that sort of thing. As my grandfather often said, we'll see. Over and over, these dire predictions are reported, causing fear in people, excessive anxiety. Am I saying that none of these things will take place? No, I'm not saying that. Will there be a chastisement? Yes, we're in it now. The attacks on the faith and the loss of souls are frightening to behold with anyone who has faith, who has eyes to see and ears to hear. The spiritual chastisement we're under now is much more damaging than any physical disaster. The soul is much more precious than the body. Think of all the fallen aways you know. Think of all the apostates we know. No, the chastisement has come and it will develop. It will become physical. Disasters and whatnot has been predicted. I have no doubts. The approved prophecies, underline the word approved, speak of it. Our Lady speaks of it coming in the form of man-made and heaven-sent forms. Thus, I'm not advocating that we ignore all prophecy. I am saying we should listen and study only that which is approved and not spread abroad the unapproved. If God wants us to listen to some newer prophet, he will make it so that the church, he is the soul of the church. He can do what he wants. He's all powerful. He's the king. If he wants some newer prophet approved, he will make that prophet get approved. So we'll listen to them. And the fact of the matter is, we have a lot already. We have sufficient information. We have what is needed in the approved prophets. We don't need new ones. So if you are wondering about these things, please read the approved. I recommend the book by Desmond Birch, Trial, Tribulation, and Triumph. In this book, he gives many quotes from approved prophets and he organizes it and harmonizes it. He shows how they all go together and he gives you the timeline and everything. And when you read it, you actually become peaceful. You get it. Okay, I get it now. Instead of all these weird things floating around, you're actually hearing the voice of God. His commentary leaves a little bit to be desired, but his organization is excellent. What needs to be understood here is this. One of the oldest temptations of man is the desire for secret or hidden knowledge. To be in the know, as we say, to put it another way, to be among those who figured it out all out ahead of time and told others what was going to happen with accuracy. Come on, don't we like to be in that position? How attractive it is to be the one who pulls the alarm to save the day. Sad to say, I suspect most end up crying wolf, causing more confusion and unwanted fear that prevents good works and the fulfilling of our duties. One of the vices opposes to prudence is exaggerated worry of the future. It leads to a paralyzing effect on our state in life. We no longer fulfill our duties. We no longer pray as we ought. Our Lord said, do not be anxious about your life. The evil of the day is sufficient. He didn't say go read all the prophecies. He does give us prophecies, though, and let's consider that. First, we must realize, though, this error in man, this, this fault, this flaw, came all the way from the beginning. Did not Adam and Eve take the devil's bait at the very beginning in the garden, reaching out to partake of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? This, of course, is one of the main reasons for the continuation of the success of the occult, the seeking secret knowledge and power through diabolical sources. People want to know about hidden things. They want to reach out and take us Adam and Eve instead of waiting for God's timing. He will definitely tell us the answers, but not in our own timing. We may only learn in the next life. 
We may only learn at the end of time, but it will be learned. Guaranteed. Think about it, though. Let's look through a little bit of the history here. Mary Todd Lincoln, the wife of Abe Lincoln, president, attended seances, even had one in the White House, to learn the fate of her deceased son, Willie. He died in 1862 while they were still in the White House. And later she attended seances to know about her murdered husband, what happened to him. Victor Hugo, famous French author, attended many seances to learn about his deceased daughter, Leopoldine, as well as to talk to famous people like Luther, Galileo, and Byron, Chateaubriand, Tsar Nicholas II, and his wife, Alexandra. They were the last reigning members of the Russian kingdom before the Russian Revolution in 1917. They regularly consulted Rasputin, and as everybody knows, they thought he was a legitimate mystic and a prophet, thought he could prophesy with great skill. They would ask him on who they should appoint to office in the kingdom of Russia, or who should be appointed to this bishopric in the Orthodox Church. Let's take a step back then, and let's consider a few things about how God has always worked. Tradition keeps us sane, as we like to say. God loves us, and he always prepares us for the most important events in history. And he does this all the way to the very end by way of prophecy and types, prefigurements. He does this to help us prepare and get ready to produce the greatest fruit from these events. He also does this because only he can see the future so clearly. It is a proof that he is God, that he is the Lord and master of all time. And we know from him, from the scriptures, that Christ our Lord is the Omega. He's the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. And we know at the end, he wins. We're going to win if we stay with Christ. Now consider for a moment some of the most important events of all time. The coming of Christ to the earth. His incarnation, his passion, his death, his resurrection and ascension. Were they foreknown? Yes, by way of types and prophecies. We search the sacred scriptures and we find them. But we will not find precise dates and times. He speaks of many things like a virgin of the flesh of David bearing a child. He speaks of being born at midnight in the city of Bethlehem. He gives times to Daniel in terms of weeks of years, but they are provided in a mysterious form. It requires lots of prayer and thought to unpack. The lesson, it seems God is not inclined to provide exact dates for the most important events of all time. What does that say about events of a lesser nature? He's not likely to give exact dates and times, but rather requires what? That we practice vigilance. He wants us to be vigilant, staying free from sin at all times. He wants us to fulfill our duties to do good and avoid evil. To build up the world, the church in the world. To save souls. Our Lord prophesied the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. He did not name the year. It turned out to be 70 A.D. But he gave the signs to look for. The Christians at the time saw them unfolding and safely left the city. They were rewarded for their vigilance. Our Lady told Sister Lucia at Fatima to look for a strange unknown light in the night sky in the reign of Pope Pius XI a future pope not yet elected or named. When the light appeared, which it did, this would be a sign of the Second World War that was coming. She had to keep vigil and look for the light. Our Lady spoke to Venerable Mother Mariana of Jesus Torres, Quito, Ecuador, of many things in the future, including the defining of the dogma of her Immaculate Conception, a great leader for Ecuador who turned out to be Gabriel Garcena Marino, and many abuses of the sacraments in the 20th century she foretold with great accuracy. 
All of them have come to pass. But to see this, one has to be vigilant. In fact, the main message of Quito, Ecuador, Our Lady of Success, Good Success, given to Holy Mother Mariana, revolved around one symbolic event, the extinguishing of the vigil lamp of the Most Blessed Sacrament. What brought about the evils, one might argue, just by looking at it without knowing all that was said, is the lack of vigilance in fulfilling the will of God, which is to pray and adore Him, to do our duties of our state in life, to build up the body of Christ. What did His Majesty command us in the Gospel? What I say to you, I say to all, watch. Instead of giving in to our desire for seeking what is going to happen next, or to be among the first to pull the alarm, which has more and more ended up being false alarms, once again, we're in the year 2018, let us realize this is an itch. This is an itch in man that will never be satisfied. It is a distraction. At times, I turn on the radio as I drive across our country to find religious programming. When coming across Protestant stations, not surprisingly, they inevitably talk about the apocalypse. They can't help it. Many infamous heretics started their career with a misreading of the apocalypse. Charles Manson loved the book. Once I visited a pew-making factory in North Carolina. After the sales representative showed us all the kinds of pews they made, the really good ones and the really cheap ones, he said he liked Catholics because they always buy the best pews, solid oak, while the fundamentalists and others buy cheap plywood pews. And I said, well, why is that? He said, because they expect the world to end in a few years. If we want a prophecy that is sure to be fulfilled, let me provide you one. We here, each and every one of us today, is going to die someday. To be judged and to be rewarded or punished according to what we did or did not do with our time on earth. In the light of all history, I could say we're going to die soon as our years are 70 or 80 for those who are strong which is not much in the light of several millennia. Let's do something with our time. Let's build up the church. Let's do things now instead of wondering what's going to happen in the future. It is 2018 and almost none of the dire prophecies spread about have happened. Will the world end this year? It might. Will this be the year for the big chastisement that we so justly deserve? Could be. The fact of the matter is, you will die regardless. And the more merits we have from seeking to build up the body of Christ on earth, the better prepared we will be to face those trying times or our own death, whichever comes first. Thus, St. Paul tells us to redeem the time, to build on the foundation of Christ, to work out our salvation. Please take a lesson from my grandfather. When we hear the sky is falling prophecies, say, we'll see, we'll see. Meantime, let's do our duties and prepare for a holy death. Let's do something with our time. King David says in the Psalms, the sun ariseth, man shall go forth to his work and to his labor until the evening. The sun has not yet set, dearly beloved. It is still light. There is surely to come a night, as our Lord himself predicts, in which no man can work, nay, even the three days of darkness. But in the meantime, let us keep focused on making this day count, seeking ever to labor before the sun sets on our life or on the world around us. We still have time to do good works and we have time to build. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.